You don't need much these days to record pretty good quality video just using your smartphone and this free app from the Play Store called Open Camera. Yeah, most smartphones nowadays have their own built-in pro camera app and uh, they're pretty great but since we're talking about a general Android smartphone uh, tutorial here, uh, let's just go with this Open Camera app. It's a free open source software without any ads and it's under 2 MB and it drastically improves your video quality whichever phone you have. Whether it's a budget entry level phone or a uh, flagship phone which is like 10 times more expensive, this app will instantly improve your video performance. Like take a look at this footage from the uh, Redmi 5A. This is the uh, stock camera footage using the built-in camera app. Pretty good, but this is the open camera's footage. It may look pretty identical, but you may notice that there is no weird over sharpening or uh, trashy uh, artifacts going on with the open camera's footage because you are able to control the bitrate of your video. So in this video, we'll go about all the basics of smartphone cinematography and how you can record pretty nice looking videos with your phone. There are a couple of key differences between a normal smartphone video and a cinematic video and a primary one being motion blur. Motion blur is basically the blur that's associated with an object that's moving around and that is controlled by your shutter speed. If your shutter speed is very high like 30 or 60, the image looks very smooth. And sure, for certain applications that does look really nice. But to get that cinematic appeal, you have to match your video's shutter speed with something that your eye perceives and the human eye has an approximate frame rate of about 24 frames per second. That's why all the Hollywood movies that you have seen are recorded at 24 fps. So simply go ahead to the video settings and choose the video bitrate at something like 40 or 50 mbps, that's a pretty reasonable uh, quality. And also set the video frame rate to 24, so that way the video frame rate does not change unlike what it does with the automatic mode. Now it's a rule of thumb in cinematography that you have to keep the shutter speed 1 by 2 times the frame rate, meaning that if your frame rate is 24, your shutter speed will be 1 by 2 times 24, that's 48. Now for some reason there is no exact 1 by 48 shutter, so we usually keep it at 1 by 50. So 24 frame per second and 1 over 50 shutter speed are kept constant and everything else about the camera can be changed based on the lighting condition. And that leads me to ISO. ISO is basically the light sensitivity of your phone or uh, the camera. Usually camera sensors are not as sensitive as human eyes so we have to help it accordingly by increasing the light sensitivity that the sensor sees. And that's done basically by changing the ISO. Changing the ISO has no effect on the frame rate or the shutter speed so you can freely change it to whichever one that feels most, uh, most natural. I recommend keeping an ISO at a level where you can clearly see the details of your subject without the white colors being overblown. That's called clipping. Clipping is basically where the details are so bright that they are all lost and you can't really see anything except a bright white smudge. That usually happens in the sky when there is too much brightness in the sky because of the sun and you can't really see anything. And that's where the camera sensor's dynamic range comes into picture. The more dynamic range the phone sensor has, the better the image will look like. So that's where HDR videos will uh, look better than normal videos. Unfortunately, open camera doesn't support HDR content, so we're gonna have to stick with standard definition videos. But you can always reduce the brightness a little bit and boost the saturation in post and it gives you a similar effect of HDR, if not exact replication. Now smartphone sensors usually record in 16 by 9 video, which is the full frame sensor resolution that the camera has. But usually the cinematic videos that you see out there are recorded at 21 by 9. So that's, it's called widescreen aspect ratio, which is basically the resolution of your movie theater's display. So it mimics the human eye's peripheral vision, meaning that we see more of width than height. So we can't really see up and down that well, but we do see left and right very well. So keeping the left and right horizontal information more and vertical information less gives it a, a very cinematic uh, eye-pleasing appeal. What I usually do is I record in normal 16 by 9 and then I simply crop the videos in post. And that's how it's done in most Hollywood cameras as well. They record in a very uh, square-like aspect ratio and they then reduce it to a 21 by 9 cinema aspect ratio. But to make sure that nothing gets cropped out when you are cropping the video in post, you can set something called as a crop guide. It basically adds a window where you can frame your shot accordingly that you can use later to crop it safely. Because while recording itself, if you compose your image properly, then you will have very less work to do in post. And that's what I really recommend. When you are in the scene itself, when you are recording, keep the settings as optimal as you can and make very minimal mistakes so that it saves you a lot of headache while you are editing that video. Let's talk about the next most important thing, that's focus. Uh, focusing a video on the subject is very important and how you change focus also really makes it um, that much more appealing. Usually smartphones video software, uh, it uh, emphasizes speed, like uh, it, it emphasizes on focusing on a subject as fast as possible. But that doesn't exactly mimic how a professional camera would behave. 
To do that, you can actually set manual focus in the open camera by pressing on this uh, menu in the top corner and selecting M. And to make sure that the focus is properly set on the subject, you can actually enable a setting called focus peaking. Focus peaking basically adds a, a fake layer of color on, on the whole scene on whichever object is in focus. So that really helps you to nail the focus down and uh, start recording it. You can even do this while the camera is recording itself. It doesn't have to be done before. Focus picking is seriously an underrated feature and uh, it, it really helps you nail the focus. Uh, even though it doesn't uh, look that impressive when you're recording it, when you're playing it back what you've already recorded, you'll really thank that uh, you had focus picking because the image looks crisp and sharp. Now white balance is something that you don't really have to concern yourself with really because uh, almost every smartphone sensor have a, has a pretty good calibration for white balance nowadays. But in case you don't want to leave it to chance or uh, in case you have bad experience with your phone's built-in camera or the camera software then you can basically set this white balance to daylight when you're recording outside it gives a very natural yellowish look to the entire image that's uh, that's pretty a close replication of the actual sunlight don't worry if the image looks a little bit yellow unless you're doing some color sensitive work uh, if you're just recording outdoors and stuff uh, yellow color looks really pleasing to human eye because we are designed to look at yellow sunlight anyway so don't worry too much about that set it to daylight and carry on you may see this weird setting called speed in open camera now do don't touch that don't i said don't touch yeah this is what happens on some phones camera app completely crashes with a fatal error uh, when it does work, it, it simply increases the speed or uh, like the, the encoding speed of the video. So if you record at 30 FPS, it will be saved at a much faster frame rate. So it will give that weird TikTok kind of a feel. So don't do that. It's really stupid. The reason why I recommend open camera over others is because uh, it has a very good feature where you can lock the uh, bitrate itself. Like I mentioned earlier, you can lock the bitrate of each individual frame to a certain megabits per second. Bitrate is basically the amount of detail captured in uh, in each frame. So the higher the bitrate, a uh, general rule of thumb is the better your image will look in, in the post-processing. So you can actually do a lot more in the editing work uh, if the bitrate is more. Uh, when your camera is set to auto, like when, when you're just recording with a normal automatic mode camera on your phone, uh, it'll just record at varying bitrate. So if the light is good, the bitrate will be high. And if you're recording indoors, the bitrate will be very low. So the image ends up looking pretty garbage. That's why mobile phone videos don't really look as good as uh, a professional DSLR video. But it doesn't have to be that way. I really feel that uh, we should just practice our trade with the devices that we have now before upgrading. Like I see so many people just go out and buy a camera when they haven't really mastered their existing hardware in the first place. I really think that we should get good at the, uh, the trade itself before upgrading ourselves and investing into it uh, even further. The settings that you see on the uh, open camera app here are basically the same uh, professional settings that you see on any camera. So once you master this here, you will be able to make even better content when you have actual professional equipment. That's what my goal is. I want to use my phone as much as I can until a point where it seems like my phone is holding me back. Uh, when there's nothing more I can do with the knowledge that I have. That is the point when I'll upgrade to a camera. But until then, I encourage you to do the same. Use your phones, use the open camera app, and just record great videos. Now yeah, since this is a mobile phone camera, it does have some limitations. Uh, like for example, in a very bright environment, even if you have set the uh, ISO very low, the image may still look very bright because you have set the shutter speed to 1 by 50. Uh, that's actually a pretty slow shutter and it lets in a lot of light which uh, which the camera will overblow. So you can actually reduce, I mean increase the speed or uh, reduce the shutter time but uh, keep the frame rate fixed. Don't change the 24 fps frame rate and uh, increase the shutter if you want uh, to get a better image in, in a very bright environment. In professional cameras actually they use something called an ND filter. It's a neutral density filter that's basically like sunglasses for your camera. That It reduces the light coming in so it allows you to maintain the same 1 by 50th of a shutter. But since we don't have all those professional equipments with us, yeah, we can compromise with the shutter speed a little bit. I don't suggest you use the front camera if you want to record yourself because uh, whatever settings that I mentioned, it uh, only applies to the rear camera sensor for some reason. So if you want to record yourself, then uh, simply flip over the phone and start talking. Recording yourself like this without looking at the viewfinder may be a little bit difficult uh, at first, but uh, like with anything, the more you do it, the better you will get at it. That's what she said. And there you have it. That's basically all you need to know to get started with uh, professional looking cinematic video from your smartphone. You are now equipped to record high quality cat videos whenever you want. If you have any further questions or suggestions then leave them in the comments down below and I'll see you soon with the next one. It's not a game. It's a